Jesus. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, prayer governors. Good morning, prayer governors. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Prayer governors, good morning, good morning, good morning. The time has not changed. The time has not changed. I woke up and there was no electricity, so it was... Um, it was certainly going to be a struggle with network, but as soon as electricity came back on, I started getting ready and we are here at 6.30. I'm trusting God for us to be finished in the next 30 minutes. So pray for me, pray for me, pray for me, prayer governor, so that I can just release what I feel the Lord has laid upon my spirit this morning. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you from wherever you're watching from in the next minute or so. I just want to say shout out wherever you're watching from so just drop it in the comment section good morning good morning big catty good morning shali shali mokwena good morning good morning good morning good morning good morning morning spay good morning good morning good morning good morning god bless you god bless you god bless you god bless you where are you watching this from good morning good morning Velma from Jamaica. Good morning, Sandra from Jamaica. Wow, Jamaica is really represented in the house. I pray so too. I pray so too. I pray so too, smiley face. Sure. I pray so too. Mikensa, good morning from Ghana. Good morning, South Africa. Good morning from Kenya, smiley face. Good morning, Aurelia from South Africa. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. No sister from Eastland in South Africa. God bless you. Magaiva from South Africa. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Gracious from Zimbabwe. Good. Very, a very, very good morning. Masego from South Africa. Good morning. Zini from Nigeria. Good morning. Good morning. I have uh, something that I need to cover and I'm just trusting God for wisdom. Shamila, good morning from South Africa. Miss P from South Africa. Johannesburg, good morning. Miss P, you must come to our worship concert, so our worship event um, on the 7th of next month. It would be nice to see you. If you're in Johannesburg or in the surrounding areas, it would be lovely to have you. Oh, Mambo, good morning from the great Zimbabwe. The great Zimbabwe, beautiful man. It's, it's, Zimbabwe is an amazing country. Love, love, love my country. Reedy, good morning from Mauritius. I pray so too, Zini. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Let's see if we can work this word. Cayman Islands. Good morning. One of these good days, I'm going to come for vacation in the Cayman Islands. I believe it's coming from my mouth straight into God's ear. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's turn to the book of Genesis. Um, God, may God give me grace to work this. You know what? I'm going to read the particular scripture that I, that I, that I want us to touch and agree on in prayer. Mm. It broke me. It broke me when I was reading this scripture. Um, something just moved in my spirit. And I said, Lord, I want to touch and agree with the, with the prayer governors concerning this. Because how many of you know that it's such a painful season when you are forgotten in the places where you should be remembered by the people that should, that should, that should speak a word on your behalf? And a lot of times we say, listen, I do life alone. It's worked for me. But the truth of the matter is that there comes a point in time when you need somebody. You need somebody to speak well of you. You need somebody to, to say your name in the rooms that you can't enter into. And yesterday we sort of touched on it and I could sense that there was a vein, vein there. And we're coming back today and I want us to pray for reciprocal relationships, reciprocal relationships. I know somebody is on the comments and they're saying, man, God, you have heard my prayer. God, you, 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 you caught my heart because when we touched on it yesterday, something shifted, something moved. 
So we're going to pray for reciprocal relationships. And in, in particular, I want to read one statement, one verse, and I'm going to give you context. I think that's the only way we can really cover this prayer point this morning. So it's the book of Genesis chapter 40, verse 23. If somebody could just, could just uh, 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 write that in the comments and I will pin it. Genesis 40, verse 23. It's a very small statement. It's a very small sentence. And it, it just says, the chief cup bearer, however, did not remember Joseph. He forgot all about him. I'm going to repeat that for somebody. The chief cup bearer, however, did not remember Joseph and forgot all about him. Somebody saying, listen, I don't know how life works, woman of God, because all the people that I've poured myself into, I'm not seeing any reciprocation. Woman of God, I don't know how God does it. But every single person that I helped in my lifetime, when the time came, I haven't received any reciprocation from them. Some of you, you're saying I have been in a marriage for over a decade. And man, I have forsaken my family, forsaken my name, forsaken my tribe, forsaken everything I knew. In fact, I forsook the comfort of, our, of my family and I connected myself to this man's tribe and, and this man's lineage and this man's family. And I forgot all I knew only to connect myself to this man who no longer remembers me, takes me for granted. Some of you are men on this live broadcast. You're saying, woman of God, I have worked for my family. I have labored to give my, life the, my wife the lifestyle that she has. I have loved her. I have been faithful. I have been consistent. But I've been told that she wants a divorce. We're going to be praying for reciprocal relationships today. Some of you, you're saying, I have been in a, in a friendship and I, at this point, I just, I'm tired. I'm tired because I'm constantly the one that's seeding. I'm constantly the one that's sowing. Constantly the one that's reaching out. Constantly the one that's looking for my friend. Constantly the one that's attending my friend's events. Constantly the one that's showing up for my friend. But when my time comes, the Bible says the chief cup bearer did not remember Joseph. He forgot all about him. Didn't remember Joseph in the time when it was most important. Forgot all about him. So just to give you a little bit of context. Scripture says that Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. Where a man named Pharaoh, an officer, an, Egy an Egyptian when an Egyptian named Pharaoh, an officer of Potiphar, an, an officer of Pharaoh. Let me start again. Joseph has been taken to Egypt. And there is an Egyptian named Potiphar and he's an officer of Pharaoh and he's the captain of the guards. The Bible says that he identified Joseph and he decided to make Joseph head and governor over his house. And the Bible says that the Lord was with, with Joseph and Joseph became a successful man, man, even though he was serving in the household of this Egyptian master. I declare and decree that in the place and in the corner where the enemy has you, he think he's got you on chokehold. But I declare and decree in the name of Jesus, according to his word, that may God give you great success. May God be with you, even in the places where you, you look most unprivileged. The Bible says that Joseph became a successful man serving in the house of his Egyptian master. I just prophetically declare over you that God is going to give you supernatural favor. That God is going to give you supernatural grace. That he will distinguish you in the name of Jesus Christ. You will be distinguished in, even in the most obscure places. That God will approve you even in the most obscure pl places. That God will give you goodwill even in the most obscure places. That he will show you kind, kindness and courtesy. Even in the places where the enemy thought you, your life was over. Even when the enemy thought that you were done. Even when the enemy thought that you were finished. <laughs> Even when the enemy thought that he had sold you into slavery. The Bible says that Joseph became a successful man. God help me. God help me. The Bible says that when his master saw that the Lord was with him. There are certain people that you're, you're going to get promotions. You're going to get elevations. You're going to get distinction. You're going to get lifted. Because the Bible says when his master saw that he was, he was, the Lord was with him. May people see that the Lord is with you. 
in the name of Jesus. May people see that the Lord is with you at work. May people see that the Lord is with you in ministry. May people see that the Lord is with you in projects. May people see that the Lord is with you in friendships. May people see that the Lord is with you in the place of assignment where God has planted you. The Bible says that when the master saw that the Lord was with them and made them prosper in all he did, Joseph found favor in his sight. I declare and decree that the favor and the oil of God that is over your head is going to begin to attract faith. It's going to begin to attra attract favor. I declare that the oil on your head, I declare that God on your head, I declare that the spirit of God sitting on your head is going to begin to attract favor in the right places. The Bible says Joseph found favor in his sight and became his personal assistant. I just went back a little bit. I want to give you context. I want to give you quick context. So the Bible says that this man who wasn't even a believer, who didn't even know Joseph's God, the Bible says that he, he, he started experiencing a feeling of favor in his in his heart concerning joseph so the bible says because god was with joseph potiphar ends up putting him in charge of his household so all of a sudden joseph is now trusted joseph is now given greater responsibility i declare and decree over your life that in the places where god has planted you i don't care where that is <laughs> it might look shabby it might look like nothing of yours exists there. It might not look like the place where God showed you in your vision. But I pray that as you are faithful in that place, that God will trust you with more. I pray that in the little things, how many of you know that all big things start small? How many of you know that when you're trusted with little, God will trust you with much? When you are faithful with the little, God trusts you with much. The Bible says Potiphar puts him in charge of his household and he entrusts him with everything. But the Bible says something happens in Potiphar's house. The Bible says that Joseph was a good looking man. And it turns out that Potiphar's wife decides that she wanted Joseph for herself. She wanted Joseph for herself. The Bible says, but he refused. Mm. He said, look, with me here, my master does not concern himself with anything. He has trusted me with the whole of his household. <laughs> Higher levels higher devils i know what we're, we're praying for your promotion we're trusting god together that god is going to elevate you we're trusting god together that god is going to lift you up we're trusting god together that it's now time you've been around this mountain for too long it's about time for you to be trusted with much but let me tell you something there are high winds high up in the air there are high winds high up in high places you better gird yourself up with god you better gird yourself up with god you better gird yourself up with God. The Bible says, he says to the master's wife, I have been entrusted with everything he owns to my care. And no one in this house is greater than me, except with the exception of you. But Potiphar's wife kept persisting. She kept, she just couldn't let go. She couldn't let off. The Bible says one day she grabs Joseph by the clock. As she grabs Joseph by the clo clock, she says, you better sleep with me power corrupts how many of you know how many of you many of you have been in power places a lot of strange things happen in those places so i know you want to be a part of those communities i know you want to be a part of those circles but i need you to gird yourself up with god god says eh, promotion is inevitable because the glory and the gravity of my presence over your life is about to cause you to ascend but i pray that as you ascend you continue to remain grounded and anchored in god the Bible says that Joseph, Potiphar's wife, continues to bother Joseph. And on one particular day, something happens and Joseph escapes with his life. Oh, I, I prophesy and declare and decree over the men over this house that in the times when the enemy puts you on, on a corner, in the times when the enemy has you on chokehold, in the time when the enemy has his foot on your neck, in the times when everything inside of you is screaming compromise, 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 I prophesy in the name of Jesus that the spirit of the living God will raise up a standard inside of you. I prophesy that the spirit of God will give you grace. I prophesy that the Spirit of God will give you a way. I prophesy in the name of Jesus that the Spirit of God will give you courage and integrity. In the name of Jesus, that he will give you the grace to escape, to escape with your life. Some of you, you are in compromising situations right now. Some of you, you're in compromising situations right now. You're at work. 
and someone has uh, has told you that they want you to be a part of a part of a syndicate that's about to do something something strange in your workplace some of you are in ministry and your ministry colleagues are, are planning something that has no integrity and they've said we want to rope you in some of you you are in families and your families are about to do something that does not align with your values you're in a corner but i i declare and decree over you that god will give you grace to flee that god is going to break you free from that pressure that god is going to give you grace to run that god is going to give you grace to get away that god will cause you to remain in character ah uh, i don't know who i'm speaking to but the bible says joseph runs away but his cloak remains in the house of potiphar being held by potiphar's wife how many of you know that sometimes just because you have evidence against someone it doesn't mean that they are that they, that they are wrong how many of you know that just because you think you've got evidence against somebody we live in a time when people can fake twitter 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 posts we live in times when there is artificial intelligence we live in times when there, there's certain people that are in prisons for something that they didn't do that's why one of the things that we really need to focus on as Christians is prison ministry because there are so many forgotten souls in prison. Some of you are saying, woman of God, you're speaking about my uncle. He's in prison for a crime he did not commit. Because when the law, when evidence, when everything is, is put together and it looks like you are, you are wrong and it looks like you're on the wrong side of the law, you go to prison. So the Bible says Potiphar comes back and his wife says, look at what Joseph has done. And the Bible says that he fumed with anger. The Bible says he burnt this version that I'm reading. It says it burnt with anger. And the Bible says, so Joseph's master took him and had him thrown into prison. There are certain things that happened. Nobody came to you to ask you for your side. Nobody came to you to ask you for your narrative. Nobody came to you to ask you for your story. People just made a conclusion and judged you. How many of you have ever been in ministry or you've ever been in a local church and something happened and when you thought the people that you had invested your life in, in building relationships in, in serving God together with, when you thought they were going to come to you and ask you what had happened, they made a, made a conclusion and they secluded you. Some of you, you're experiencing church hurt because nobody ever came to you and asked you what truly happened, what truly transpired. Nobody asked you why you were behaving the way you were behaving. Nobody asked you why you dressed the way you were dressing. Nobody asked you why you, why, why you were angry the way you were angry. Nobody prayed for you. We have church hurt because people have not been asked for their side of the story. We have church hurt because people have not been given an opportunity to express themselves and to speak for themselves. Nobody say to you, I want to understand the root of this matter. The Bible says Potiphar enters into this situation and all he does is to take Joseph and throw him in prison. I declare and decree over your life that there's certain places that God is going to begin to vindicate you. It could have been 10 years later, could have been five years later, but some people are going to give you phone calls and say, listen, I just discovered a decade later that I judged you for things you didn't do. I just discovered, I just discovered, I just discovered that for the past few years, I have been using a narrative that was wrong concerning you. I just discovered that the story they told me about you was out of insecurity and jealousy and envy. I just discovered that what I heard from that colleague that we are working with, that the very thing that's been standing in the way of you and your promotion has been incorrect all along. I declare, I declare in the atmosphere, all those type of conversations in the matchless name of Jesus. Just tap, tap, tap on the, tap on the screen if you are in agreement. Just tap tap in agreement tap on the screen with the in agreement in the matchless name of jesus so joseph is now in prison and the bible says that some time later as joseph had been in prison two men come into the same prison god help me god help me today's prayer point is going to be one strong prayer point and that prayer point is the very same very 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 word that we wrote wrote right there it says the cup bearer however did not remember joseph and he forgot all about him. You're just going to say, Lord, may I be remembered in the places where I sowed seed. 
May I be remembered in the places where I sowed seed. Some of you, you sowed so much seed in your church. But when the time came for your church to stand with you, when the time came for your church to pray with you, when the time came for your church to be your family and to show you support, nobody came. Nobody came. I have a story that I've never shared. I have a story I've never shared, but one, one time, many, many years ago, <laughs> many, many, many years ago, one time, should I share this Holy Spirit? <laughs> should I share this in the comment section? Should I share this? I don't know. I don't know why I keep circling around church hurt. I wasn't intending to. I wasn't, I wasn't intending to. That wasn't my plan. I didn't come here intending to minister to people that have church hurt. But there, for some reason, I'm, I feel like I'm in the vein. I feel like I'm speaking to someone. If I only came for one person today, may that person be delivered and delivered completely. May, may that person be delivered and delivered completely. I was, in a, I was in a local church many, 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 many moons ago. Many, many moons ago. And please don't put one and two together because one and two together do not always uh, add up to three. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. <laughs> I was in a local church at once and I went through something very traumatic and very tragic. Something that changed my life in a very deep way. It was one of the most difficult times. One of the most perilous times of my life. One of the most painful times of my life. One of the most broken times of my life in a local church. And what happened to me was not because of the church. It was because of something exterior. Something external that had happened. But I believed that I had a family and a, and a, and a community in church that was at least to show me some type of support now and by support i just mean just come just come and just come and see me just come and, and be with me the bible says laugh with those who, with, who laugh and cry with those who cry and so in this particular season i didn't expect a lot from people there wasn't anything anyone was going to tell me that was going to make the pain easier i had to just go through it and 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 press into god through it and just allow god to work on it as time went how many of you know that there's pain that 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 only heals as time proceeds i mean you can pray about it and you need to pray about it and you must pray about it but it doesn't it's 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 not it's it doesn't make the pain any less and so i was going through this pain that the church really hadn't hadn't inflicted on me but i just did expect that because i had spent um I had, I had spent time sowing and seeding and, and, and creating relationships and bonding and building and doing life and God with those people. I expected somebody to show up on the door and knock and just say, listen, I'm with you. And let me tell you something, by the grace of God, and I'm grateful, there were people that came. In fact, there was a person that came. Let me be honest and say there was a person that came, but he was one of the least expected people to come. Because the people that 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 I the, the people that I thought were going to knock on the door and just say, "Listen, we're praying with you. We love you, and we're with you, and we see your pain, and we just came here to sit with you." Um, nobody showed up. Nobody showed up. But that was I was I believe that God had really worked on my inner man. I was a young Christian, but I I think I got a very big crush course. When I came into salvation, we were taught that you didn't come to church for people. You came to church for God. And so I had a very good base and, and a very good foundation. And, and, and I, didn't, I didn't hold it against them even though I noticed it. I have church leaders on the live broadcast today. I want you to know that people are not as dumb as you think they are. I'm telling you, pastors. I'm telling you, apostles. I'm telling you, bishops and prophet, prof, prophets and prophetesses. People are not as dumb as we think they are. God help me this morning. People are not as, as, as unseeing as we think they are. People are not as unseeing as we think they are. People are, people, people are not as blind as we, see they, as we think they are. People are not as blind as we think they are. People, it's not that people don't see what's happening. Because sometimes people, people are quiet and we think people don't see stuff. But people notice stuff. There's some times when people choose to be mature. There's some times when people choose to be the bigger person in local churches. There's some times when people choose that they would rather take the high high road, high, the highway, than to than to address it. There are times when people honor you so much that they don't they don't address it. But for you to continue to take that for granted, for you to continue to take for granted that people see and people notice, and that you're not serving an an, an unintelligent uh, 
a clumsy group of people that God has given you well, well sound minded people. I don't know who I'm speaking to. And so I saw it, but I, I made a conscious, mature decision not to be offended by it. But God said, I, I, I want to I wanna test your heart. I, I, I believe that God was, was also testing my heart in this situation. <laughs> Why am I here, Lord? Why am I here? Oh, my goodness. Why am I speaking about this? Oh, Lord, help me. I just need you to keep tapping that screen. If I keep seeing those hearts, I'm going to keep sharing. <laughs> I, need to keep, I need to keep seeing those hearts on the screen. Just keep tapping on that screen. <laughs> so people are not as unseeing as we think they are. People are not as blind as we think they are. And so I noticed it. I, I noticed that nobody came that, I, that, 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 that usually should have come according to the structures of the church. Nobody came. Nobody to just came to just say, listen, we see you. We love you. We're here. We don't have anything to tell you, but we're just here. Nobody came. Nobody called. It was, it was a strange thing. It was a strange thing. And I'm, and I'm trying to not give as much detail because sometimes then people put one and one together and make it two. And so what then ended up happening is what really, what really, what really then ended up, what really ended up shifting me. Because at the exact same time, someone that I also loved, somebody that I was also connected to, also then went through something, something painful, something heartbreaking, something very, 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 very painful, um, something very heartbreaking. And I think I was okay with nobody coming. It wasn't right. Doesn't make it right. Doesn't make it right when people that that love you and that are building with you, that are supporting you um, in your local ministry, that are building, that are loving Jesus with you, excuse you. Excuse you for your omission. Doesn't make it right. But we, we do. We do that quite a lot. We excuse our leaders. And leaders here, I want you to know, people watch and people see and people notice. And don't ever take for granted that people can observe and people can notice and people have capacity to, 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 to decipher circumstances. But something happened to somebody that I knew. And as this thing happened to somebody that I knew, I noticed a completely different completely different completely different response from the local church oh man oh man you talk about support you talk about 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 checking up on it was the it was the if there was a template that was supposed to be written in that local church it was supposed to be done from that particular situation oh people came oh people came oh people called Oh, people called. Oh, people, people. Let me tell you something. There was a particular one. I remember one particular day that I remember one particular specific day. I mean, I mean, it was a, it was a top tier type of um, service. I remember one particular day the, the 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 person that was in pain and the person that was also going through something. Um, I can't even say equally devastating. We were going through different things and 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 we were also going through like very life changing circumstances. But I particularly remember, you know, uh, this person being taken out, you know, being taken out to a top tier restaurant just for counseling. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? You know, being 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 chauffeured. In a, in a top tier car being taken in, into a top tier restaurant for counseling. And at this particular point, nobody had called. Nobody had sent a message. Nobody had asked how I was doing. Nobody had. And so I think in that moment, something broke in me. Something broke in me. Something broke in me. And I, and I started to say, Lord, Lord, why was there a different tr treatment between myself and, and that person? And there are very obvious common reasons why people get treated differently in local churches. And unfortunately, many of them have to do with materialistic things, materialistic, materialistic, a materialistic way of viewing people. And, I, and it was very evident that there were certain things that they, that, 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 that they could they were, had cap, 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 capabilities and capacities to do that I didn't have capabilities and capacities to do in that season. Um, and, um, and, 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 and something broke in me. Something broke in me. Something broke in me. I don't know who I was sharing that for, but I want you to know that you're not alone. 
Sometimes, sometimes stuff happens and we don't have a narrative for it. We don't have stories for it. I could, I could unpack this even further, but it, it would just make people put one and three together to, 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 put, to put it to four. But I specifically remember in that season that there was such a very deep difference between the way that I was given support or the lack thereof because there was none and the, and the way that somebody received support. And I remember trying so hard as a young Christian to to be to to be mature because that's what you're taught to do. You're taught, taught to be grown up. You're taught to be mature. You're taught to not see your leaders in a certain light. You're taught to see your leaders in a certain way. Remember, today we're praying for reciprocal relationships. I'm about to land this quickly, and I just want to pray one prayer for you that when the time is right, that people that are meant to remember you must remember you. Oh, how I wished in that season that somebody had remembered me. How I wish that somebody had remembered my toil. How I wish that somebody had remembered what I had sowed and seeded into the vision. How I wish somebody remembered that I had been, that I had been in this space and I had, and I had been faithful and I had been loyal. And how I, I wish I had, I had somebody that had, that had just showed up and showed me love. And, 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 and I, I thank God for the person that did. And it wasn't any of the people, any of the people in the structures at all. It was not, it was not, it was not, it was not. And, 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 and I can go deeper into, into, you know, that visit and that picking up and that taking to a top tier restaurant. And, you know, it was a very strange thing for me. It was a very strange thing for me because it was different sex, sex people, different gender people. And I thought to myself, is this still a, is this still a counseling session? Is this still a counseling session? Is it still a counseling session? The Bible says that sometime later, the king bearer and the baker offended their master. And the Bible says that they enter into prison where Joseph has been for a while. And so the Bible says that both of them have a dream. And as they have a dream, Joseph comes. Remember, Joseph has now started running even the, the prison. I declare and decree that in the place where the enemy thinks that he, he has you in prison, when the enemy thinks that he has you locked away, when the enemy thinks that he has you hidden from the people that are meant to elevate you to your place of assignment, I declare and decree that even in those places that God is going to elevate you, that God is going to lift you, that God is going to distinguish you, that God is going to favor you, that God is going to give you great success. Ah, yabaso katalabasanda. That in those places, that even in prison, there will be an uprise. That even in prison, that there will be an upgrade. That even in prison, that there will be promotion. I declare and decree that it doesn't matter where the enemy has you in this season. I prophesy over you that promotion is your portion. Promotion is your portion. Promotion is your portion. The Bible says that Joseph is in prison, but all of a sudden, while he's in prison, he is acting. Like he's a God, he's a God. He is, he's now, he, he has, he has full permission to navigate around the prison as though he is one of the prison captains. And the Bible says that he specifically sees these two men and he says, what's wrong with you? And the Bible says they start unpacking their dreams before we know it. Let's land this. Joseph is able to be given by way of, of divine intervention, intervention, by way of divine intervention, by way of of discernment by way of the spirit of knowledge by way of the spirit of prophecy joseph is able to decipher what these dreams mean and he say he gives them the meanings but the bible says something specific it says that joseph then says to the cup bearer when you finally arrive at the place where i have told you you are going do you know there are certain people that that, that that you are tied to by reason of your prophetic word when you finally arrive remember me Remember me, remember me. But verse 23 says, but the chief cup bearer, after he had gone out of prison, did not remember Joseph. He forgot all about him. Oh, let us pray. Father, I pray. And this is your prayer point this morning. Lord, in the places where I sowed seed, in the places where I showed generosity, in the places where I showed generosity, in the place where I showed community in the place where I seeded my time, where I seeded my treasures, where I seeded my money, in the places where I'm meant to be remembered, where people are taking me for granted, where people have forgotten me. May I be remembered. Oh, somebody begin to pray. Somebody begin to pray that prayer this morning as we're lending this. Pray that prayer. 
Some of you, you know exactly what you need to pray for this morning. I declare and decree that in my family, I will be remembered. In the name of Jesus, I declare in my extended family, I will be remembered. I declare that in my marriage, I will be remembered. I declare that in my friendships, I will be remembered. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that in my workplace, I will be remembered. I declare that in my ministry, I will be remembered. I declare that in my place of assignment, I will be remembered. I declare that when the time comes for people to remember me and to partner up with me and to contend with me and to fight with me, I declare that I will be remembered. I declare that my name will not be forgotten. I declare that my name will not be forgotten. I declare that my name will not slip from people's mouth. I declare that I will not be neglected in the name of Jesus. I declare that I will not be taken for granted in the matchless name of Jesus. Some of you, you have taken care of children that were not yours. Some of you, you have taken children care of children that were not even yours to take care of some of you you have sowed seed into places that had nothing to do with you nothing to do with your family and it's not as though your family didn't need that seed but you were being generous and kind and no you didn't expect anything in return but it's good courtesy when you are in trouble for people to remember you Some of you, you're in the workplace and you have helped so many people, so many different departments. But now is the time for you to receive that reciprocation and nothing is coming. God bless you for those gifts. May God increase where you have taken, Shazi. Nothing, nobody, nobody, nobody comes. You're taken for granted. Underappreciated, undervalued. Nobody acknowledges that there was a season and a time when you helped them. The Bible says the chief cup bearer leaves the prison. As he's leaving the prison, he doesn't say to himself, what is the reason that led me out of this prison? It's a man named Joseph. It's a man named Joseph who gave me hope when I needed it. The Bible says he didn't remember Joseph. He forgot all about him. This is the nature of humanity. Humanity will forget you humanity will forget you i don't know who i'm speaking to today but some of you need to literally you need to literally pray certain things into existence because the nature and the heart of a man is ingratitude the nature of a man is so ungrateful that's the fabric of our hearts they are deceitfully wicked above all things so I just begin to pray over you in the name of Jesus that the hearts of the people that are connected to you will, 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 will in the name of Jesus, I just, I'm seeing a thawing of a heart. It's almost as though a heart was frozen, but God is throwing it. And in that thawing, it is softening up and it is beginning to remember. It is beginning to remember. It is beginning to remember all the good things that you have done. Some of the most painful things in marriages that are about to enter into divorce is a lack of a lack of gratitude do you know pain can make you forget all the good things that somebody has done for you do you know pain can make you forget all the years that someone has invested in you do you know pain do you know do you know disappointment maybe it didn't turn out the way that you had envisioned do you know it can make you forget all the investment that someone made on you have you ever heard people that are about to divorce talk about each other it's as though it's as though they they didn't see all these years. They don't see themselves. They're not where they used to be. You saw a picture of of that man. He wasn't who he is today. Saw a picture of that woman. Wasn't who she is today. I declare and decree in the name of Jesus that the people that are meant to remember us will not take us for granted. They will not take us for granted. Have you ever seen a, a man or a woman when they've met someone else? They're in courtship, they're in relationship, about to enter into marriage. But when they meet someone else and they decide to change their mind, they forget. They forget all the things. They forget all the time they, 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 they spent trying to, to convince you. When you told them you, you were not interested. When you told them you, you, they, they weren't your type. When you told them you weren't ready for a relationship. When you told them th they needed to pray again because God didn't say none of what they said people forget the fabric of a man's heart is that they will forget you 
And so you have to be intentional about praying for people's hearts concerning you. You have to be intentional about praying for people's hearts concerning you because there's certain people that have forgotten you that shouldn't have forgotten you. People that hold the keys of your destiny. People that, that, that are meant to contribute something on the pathway of your assignment. So I want you to just press into God and pray and say, God, I pray that you orchestrate and we a wind that comes from the north, from the east, from the west to the south. Father, we prophesy to the winds that they are carrying everything that we are owed. Everything that is still hanging. Everything that is still pending. In the matchless name of Jesus. Father, in the places where we have sowed seed and fruit flourished and plant flourished and a harvest, a bountiful harvest flourished, but nobody ever came back to us. In the matchless name of Jesus, I declare and decree that there is coming a time where we will be remembered. There is coming a time where we will be remembered in the name of Jesus. I pray for reciprocal relationships in the places where we have planted. Father, I pray for reciprocity in the places where we have shared our our tears in the places where we have invested our time i declare and decree that that investment will come back to us and it will feed us it will come back to us and it will benefit us it will come back to us in the matchless name of jesus and in the rightful time and the rightful season god i declare that in the times when we need people we will have people surrounding us in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of Jesus Christ. Shandala bosa talaba. I pray for you. In the places where you have been taken for granted. Some of you, you have been taken for granted by your own kids. I mean, you, 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 so much sacrifice. So much sacrifice to make sure that this life gets the best, gets better than you. And the level of disrespect the level of neglect, the level of being taken for granted, the, the, the level at which they speak to you. May God wipe away that pain and that hurt and that anger and that resentment that you have towards your children. It's also not good for them because it, it causes spiritual noise in the realm of the spirit concerning their lives. Some of you, your children are going through so much pain because you are in pain and in anger and bitterness because they've taken you for granted. And let me tell you something, parents don't, parents don't sow into your life so you can sow back generally. Some do, but generally just parents just want you to have the best life and they want you to be reasonable. They want you to treat them with, with, with reason. They want you to treat them with reason. They don't. They, they, you're not a money-making scheme, generally. Generally, you're not a money-making scheme for parents. They brought you to this world. They could have decided to abort you. They didn't. They took care of you. They sacrificed a certain lifestyle in their lives. Sacrificed not going to school when they could have. Took that money. Made you who you are. Gave you a shelter. And I know we come from different backgrounds. Some of you are saying, woman of God, you don't know my mother and my father. They are abusive as hell. You're here. I once heard a preacher say that people will say, my mother and my father are witches. So I'm not going to take my kids to them. And yet you're alive. You are a child in their hands and you're alive. And you think they're going to eat your child. You think they're going to eat your child. And he said, you need to lay hands on your children and say, listen. In the name of Jesus, I speak a covering and a protection over you. Go spend the day with your grandmother and your grandfather. Something will, will change in that person's heart. No matter how hard they are. Even if it means you have to supervise your children in your, in your parents' presence. I don't know who I'm talking to. Even if it means you have to supervise that visit. Even if it means you have to be around to make sure that nothing happens to your children. Because God knows we have some, some, some interesting things that are happening in families. Families are broken. Father, we thank you today. You have been healing. I'm sensing a healing anointing in the atmosphere. This word was simple, but it was healing people. God was just ministering to someone. 
God was ministering to someone. God was ministering to someone. Mm. Someone says, I can feel the pain going and chains are breaking. May God remove any church hurt. May God remove any pain that has been caused by neglect. May God remove any pain that people have experienced by people that, 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 that they sowed into. And yet they, they, they thought... Someone says, so my parents say to me, I'm a failed abortion. May God minister healing to you. There is purpose over your life. You're alive because there is purpose over your life. If, you, if there wasn't anything for you to accomplish and achieve in this world, God would have taken, taken you already to be with him. There is purpose and assignment over your life. Yeah. And sometimes, let me tell you, you need to learn to st start reparenting yourself. What does reparenting look like? It looks like giving yourself the things that you wanted, the, inner, the, the, the young child inside of you to receive. Because that young child is still crying from somewhere within. She still, she still desires to be loved. That young child, little baby girl, still desire to be affirmed by someone. You, you, nobody could do it for you. You just, you just got to learn how to do it for yourself. And you got to learn how to get into the word and to receive it from your father in heaven as well. You got to learn to reparent yourself and you got to learn to allow God to parent you too. You have to be an extension of the love that God is giving to you. In the times when you forget, you have to tell yourself, I am loved. I'm here for a purpose and assignment. I am enough. I'm here. I am needed. I am wanted. In the name of Jesus. I don't know who today's word was for. But prayer governors, I'm super grateful. I was here to be able to, to pray with you. And my prophetic declaration for you, according to the word of God today, is the chief cup bearer. When it says the chief cup bearer did not remember Joseph and forgot him at all, I declare that the chief cup bearer will remember you. May the chief cup bearer remember you. May the people that are divinely connected to your destiny remember you. May people remember you. May people that had forgotten you remember you. May people that, are, that, that, that had forgotten the good deeds you did for them remember you. May people that had forgotten the work that you did for them remember you. I need someone to just receive a phone call from someone that says, listen, I know we're not in good bo books and I know we've said so much. There's been so much strife and there's been so much back and forth. But can I honestly and humbly just acknowledge that I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for you? I know, I know, I know we, there's so much strife. We have fought so much that I don't know what we're fighting for any longer. But can I just acknowledge that you sowed so much into my life and for that I'm grateful. Do you know sometimes that's what people need? Some of you, you're on this live broadcast and that's the call you need to make to somebody. But listen. In this high heated season of our lives where we're doing a back and forth and we're hurting each other with words and we're wounding each other with words and we're, we're saying painful things about each other. Can I just acknowledge that I appreciate, I honor, I recognize all that you have planted and seeded into my life. And for that, I'm grateful. It breaks something. It breaks something in the atmosphere. It breaks something in the atmosphere when we're able to be humble enough to say, listen, I don't agree with what's happening in this season, but can I just honor you for all that you've poured into my life? It pacifies a lot of strife. It pacifies a lot of things that the enemy has planted in that, in, in that scenario that I just meant to, to take everything. I mean, I mean, there's a way of separating. There's a way of, of stopping to talk to somebody. But there, there's, there's good ways. But the enemy wanted everything. He wanted to still kill and destroy everything. But I declare and decree that God is going to remove that pride out of your heart. And you're going to make the right phone calls to the right people and say, listen, I honor you. Wow. Someone in the comment section says, I received that call a minute ago. I'm now in tears. Man, the, lib the liberty, the liberty, the, the, the liberty it gives somebody to just know that I know we're not in good books. I know things are not going well. And let me be honest, we're probably not going to make it out of this the same again. But can I just acknowledge and honor that I do recognize that you sowed seed into my life. May the cup bearer remember you in this season. 
Yes, Christine says a gentle word turns away wrath. Absolutely, it pacifies whatever the enemy had sent as an arrow into that situation. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for today. You were healing. I don't even know what you were doing. I, 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 I came here with a certain angle of ministration and prayer points, but you shifted this thing and it started touching things I hadn't even planned. You were dealing with, with brokenness. You were dealing with people that have been taken for granted. You were dealing with people that are, that are going through family issues of being taken for granted even by their children. You started healing people from church hurt. Oh, you did a great work today. And we worship you today. Mm, may your cup bearers remember you. May your cup bearers remember you. Just share your testimony in the comment section for the next two minutes. I just want to read um, how you're feeling this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Wow, I forgive my pastor for not assisting us to bury my son. Wow. I feel, your pain. I feel your pain. I feel your pain. I feel your pain. And glory to God for giving you the courage. For giving you the courage to forgive that's such a hefty hefty thing to to have to contend with and to deal with by the grace of god you can get this message on our youtube channel it's on the same handle house of hosting heaven so we're going to rebroadcast it in the afternoon because we didn't get any network um issues Someone says, I forgive my colleague for hating on me. It's the nature of men to forget, but I pray that you be remembered by your cup bearers. Mm. Someone says, I forgive my partner for the pain he caused. Forgive them, please. Let it go. Let it go and watch what God will give into your hands. Someone says, I forgive my family. You guys are really dropping so many powerful and beautiful testimonies. I forgive my former colleague for making my previous workplace hard. Oh, don't we know it all? Don't we know it, Anonymous? Man, some people can really be envious. Some people can really be intimidated by your presence. in a place they will make it difficult for you glory to god glory to god i think that we're now about to struggle with our network i can see i can see my phone showing me someone says i forgive my pastor and his wife for believing i'm a witch man people are going through the most in church Someone says, I forgive my husband. Watching this live broadcast as we're about to leave. And let it not leave you. May it continue to do a great work. I pray for people to... I want you to start... Holy Spirit, help them to remember things. Help them to... Help them, help them flush out that anger. Help them flush out that resentment. Help them flush out that pain. In the name of Jesus. Heal hearts today. In Jesus' mighty name. Mm. Someone says, my, that pain I was feeling is easing up from my chest. God bless you, prayer governors. May you have a great day, and I pray that God continues to minister. May the hand of God stretch forth into your life right now. In the next hour or so, I'm just sensing God is going to be delivering people from burdens. You're literally going to be sensing that something is coming off of your shoulders. You're going to feel lighter. You're going to feel lighter. Some of you, a, 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 a heavy spirit has been following you by reason of that unforgiveness. And, and that story that you never told anyone. But I pray in the name of Jesus that God ministers a powerful, powerful, powerful. He ministers powerfully to you today in Jesus' mighty name. We will rebroadcast this particular message on my YouTube channel, House of Hosting Heaven. So do go on YouTube if you need to hear this again. In the matchless name of Jesus.